future Woody here. So more than half of the people that did this trip were YouTubers. And afterwards, YouTube, like the paramotor YouTube scene got blasted with videos of the same thing. And even I was finding it to be a little bit too much. So I sat on my footage for more than a month. Here's the story from my perspective. <laughs> I am at the Super 8 in Gastonia, North Carolina, and I have an interesting mission today. I am going to launch from, I guess, Gastonia Municipal Airport, 20 miles away from Charlotte International, which is one of the biz busiest airports in America, which I guess makes it one of the busier airports in the world? I don't know. But it's long. It'll be like over a mile long, and I think we're going to launch, foot drag Charlotte International, and then get out. One of the guys going with us is an air traffic controller at Charlotte International, and he's been working on it for months to get us all the clearance and approvals we need from the airport and the town and stuff like that. So I haven't seen this done before. It should be kind of neat. Um, it turns out that airplanes go in like waves or loads, I think they might call them, and if we go in between them, it's not really an inconvenience for them. It's, I guess, a neat novelty. And little things like Cessnas and stuff sometimes land there. Anyway, Charlotte International. I, I, it's just not the kind of thing I wanted to say no to. So, let's check it out. Alright, the gang is here. We're starting to lay out. Everybody's warming up. Mark Honeycutt looks last in terms of prepared, preparedness. He's, right, he's like, everything's fine, screwdriver in hand. <laughs> so, soon we begin. All right, <clears throat> time to clip in. There's two pilots up already. I was low key trying not to be first because I don't have the best fuel efficiency, but it is time to get going. some confusion. I'm pretty sure that this is Dustin. He might be too far for the action can to pick up, but he has a stroke. And Dustin knows what he's doing. I'm not 100% sure who this is, but he's not following Dustin. So out of the gate, my temptation was to follow him because he was in front of me, but I've abandoned that. And now I am following Dustin. Uh, I'm going full slow on this free ride. The way it is, these trimmers, you can adjust them and trade off sort of speed for lift. And since I'm not trying to get anywhere in a hurry, I'm trying to get to a place and then wait and loiter, I just have a full slow. So that, uh, so that's right. Ah, here's the dirt track. Yeah. So he specifically told us, I remember in the briefing, that we were going to do laps around a dirt track. So this is the area where we wait for clearance. All right, update time. Sorry about the motor noise, I, it's necessary. Um, everybody's here except Elena. I'm not sure why. There's Mark, and uh, I guess we'll find out later what happened. But right now we're just kind of doing laps around the dirt track here. It's cool because we went, I launched about six minutes late, and I was feeling like anxiety and kind of worried about it. Afraid I'd miss a launch maybe, I mean, who knows. But you saw, my launch went fine. And now we wait here for like 15 or 20 minutes. So I went from being six minutes behind to like 15 minutes worth of loitering and everything is okay. So I think 
the airport is like halfway to the city. <laughs> Everybody with action cams points out things in the distance, but I know that there's a real chance you can't see it. But anyway, it's that way and I can see it. It's not very far. So if you don't fly paramotors, you might not know that the heavy you, heavier you are, the faster your weight goes. So thanks to the speed of the free ride and the weight of late night trail mix, I am up with the gaggle here in the middle of everybody, just kind of flying along. Things are good. Elena made her launch. I guess it took her a couple tries because I just got a message saying that she was up and flying. So I don't know if she'll be able to catch us and join on the mission or if she's even trying to, but she'll at least get a flight in. Update time. So we are just doing laps in this area with pretty much no place to land, which is not awesome. What, waiting for a gap. Uh, I've got my, you guys can't hear it, but the uh, aviation radio is buzzing in my ears constantly. And I hear the different flights lining up and coming in. And, uh, I don't know. Laps and laps on laps, waiting. It's happening, so it's happening. Um, this, everything's working out. They, uh, we are pair flight seven. I just heard over the aviation radio that we should start working our way over to the airport. So that's what I'm doing now. Look, I even see Elena. Maybe she will join us. And uh, yeah, here we go. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but that plane out there, I think it's on, it's the one they announced was on a five mile final. We're after that. Elena is pretty much here. It's coming together, boys. We are on our way in. I feel like I'm last here, so I don't know how much I'm going to foot drag it. By the time I get there, the air is just going to be like an alligator pit in terms of turbulence and yuckiness. But I really want to foot drag it, so we'll see what's up. I don't even know what these lights are like. Dragon, Charlotte International. This is crazy. Wow, this could be the longest foot drag I've ever done in my life. I've got clean air, my foot dragon shoes on. If I foot drag this whole airport, I feel like I'll double my lifetime foot drag experience. Future Woody here. So if you've never done this, it's a really cool thing. And it takes a lot of precision too, because basically the cage, the bottom of my paramotor is maybe six or 12 inches off the ground. So it's kind of precision flying to be able to stay, uh, maintain your altitude within a few inches for a long time. This is easily more foot dragging experience and I've had the rest of my life combined. We ended up doing this 9,000 foot airport twice. That's 18,000 feet. The nature of where I fly, it's not a beach. You have to duck down after trees, drag your feet for like 100 feet, slam on the throttle, and then get up before the next set of trees. That's the nature of my home flying site, which is why I think I've gotten more into acro stuff than real low-level stuff, because you just dip down, and I don't want to bother any of the homes, so I don't. I just, just tend to stay up high. But this was a neat change of pace for me, and 18,000 feet of foot drag, my gosh. Having said that, as a video maker, look at this. Look. I, <laughs> If I just took this, like, all this footage and set it to music, I think it would get pretty dull. So I'm going to skip ahead, but, man, this was a really cool experience. I'm glad that Dustin put it together. Dustin, if you see this, thank you. I'm just, I'm looking at my shoe. Yeah, I, 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 I'll never foot drag Charlotte International again. And I don't know if any paramotor pilots will ever do it again. But it was an opportunity that I did, just didn't want to miss. And I felt like I got better at foot dragging just, you know, that day. One day added to a lot of experience for me. All right. So it appears that the pass is going to be, I'm sorry, the gap in the planes arriving is big enough that we can do another pass. So that's what we'll do. So we did. 
I smell something burning, like burnt rubber. I think it's literally the soles of my shoes. Ugh. Old man <laughs> grunts. Good times. I think that's it for the foot drag. We are on our way back. Everything's going great. I'm really happy I got this aviation radio. Like it, I got a much better vibe for how welcome we were at the airport. And uh, there's a Piper coming from Gastonia to Charlotte International. They told us to keep an eye out for him. And it's just nice to be in touch with the rest of the air traffic, especially you know if you're in one of the country's busiest airports. Good times, good times. So we're pretty much back. And check my airspace. We're below. There's a, oh oh oh. That is why you check your airspace. There we go. Sock right here. Moon sock is worthless, it's tangled around. Well, I'll just do what Mark and Elena do. Ah, that was not. <laughs> I think that might have been a tailwind or crosswind. Uh, they just broke up. The gang was all here. We kind of did a, they call it a post-flight debrief, but that doesn't mean anything. We were just talking. <laughs> he threw this at me. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so now we're going to pack up the wings and hopefully go to breakfast. All right, check this out. Turns out the runway was 9,000 feet. This is the shoe I normally foot drag with. So it started a little worn and I made my way through. This is all new actually. And this shoe was almost new to start with and that's what it looks like now. I knew that going into it. That's why I wore these shoes. They're at the end of their life. Now they're at the end of their life. Oh. Mark is right next to me. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is good times. You're probably picking up the audio on that thing, right? There you go. Yeah, I turned your volume up. That's funny. It's kind of like the 17-hour drive um, back from Oklahoma, except we're not in the same vehicle, but we're pretty close. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, let's just do this for the next two hours. <laughs> it's a long time to do this for two hours. <laughs> yeah, and we kind of suck to have this to your speed. This is compelling video right here. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well that's it everything went super I'm back home now I'll probably bum around for an hour and a half and the weather seems nice so I might send it again get two flights in hope you enjoyed the video I like making it <laughs>